almost at the end. So the final speaker of the final session of the final day of the, <laughs> of the conference um, <clears throat> is, uh, okay, you will forgive me, Gregor uh, Celusta, did I get it right? Yeah, okay, so uh, he will tell us about the quantum computations in loop quantum gravity. Yes, I'm going to talk about uh, our attempts to use quantum computers in loop quantum gravity uh, computations. And this talk is uh, based on these two articles and on the third one which is in preparing. And all of these articles uh, I wrote with Jakub Melcharek. So first let me uh, say a few words about uh, quantum computers. Uh, so quantum computers consist of qubits, which are just two-level quantum systems. Um, so the Hilbert space describing quantum processor uh, is exponentially large. For example, the biggest, the biggest one, uh, IBM quantum computer Seattle, uh, has uh, 433 qubits. Here we see layout of these qubits in this processor. Uh, so the mm, simulation um, state of quantum processor in general uh, using classical computer is exponentially hard. Uh, so, um, uh, and moreover, there are unknown quantum algorithms that are faster than a classical one. Uh, for example, a uh, Shor's algorithm, uh, which factorizes uh, integers uh, and uh, has complexity logarithmic versus exponential complexity of um, classical algorithms. Uh, but there are some problems with quantum computers, namely uh, each gate applied on quantum computer uh, generates some errors and uh, qubits uh, have very short um, decoherence time. Uh, the solution to this problem is um, to implement error correction codes, but it requires many, many qubits because uh, each logical qubit um, have to, has, has to be encoded in many physical qubits and similarly in the gates. So in some future, probably we obtain fault tolerant quantum computers where this noise and decoherence uh, uh, will not be a, a problem. Uh, but for now, we are in a noisy intermediate scale quantum era. So we need to use uh, short quantum circuits and uh, kind of, and the algorithms which uh, work mm, quite good on current quantum computer are rational algorithms because in this case, the noise is, let's say, not a huge problem. But there is also one another problem, namely mm, transition between classical data and quantum data because it is often uh, the situation that um, uh, embedding classical, cl classical data uh, on quantum processor is exponentially hard and similarly uh, obtaining classical results from quantum register also often is, uh, for example, requires exponentially many measurements. Um, so uh, all of these things mm, lead us to mm, conclusion. Okay, the so solution to this problem is to work as long as possible uh, using quantum data, not, not classical. And all of this leads us to the conclusion that one of the possible application in nearest future for quantum computers uh, are simulations of quantum systems in physics. And uh, we focus on loop quantum gravity, which as was said here many times, is background independent of perturbative approach to quantum gravity. Um, it is based on Hamiltonian formulation and thanks for Ashtekar variables, mm, it expresses gravity as SU2 gauge theory. In loop quantum gravity, uh, quantum geometry of space is described by spin networks, which are graphs um, with holonomies on links and SU2 invariant nodes. Um, and these nodes are associated with quanta of volume. And uh, it is also worth to emphasize, to, to, uh, worth to mention that uh, spin networks can be also used for general uh, gauge theories with a compact Lie group and a connection form. So uh, our um, methods in principle can be applied also uh, to other gauge theories. Uh, we focus on uh, four valent spin networks with all, uh, with all spins equal uh, one half. 
uh, because in this case, um, first of all, a qubit in quantum processor is basically a spin one half, so it is easy to uh, implement uh, links, uh, which are spins one, one half. And moreover, uh, after imposing Gauss constraint, uh, uh, obtained node is also a qubit. So it is also mm, uh, very convenient to express this on a quantum processor. Okay, here we see a fragment of spin network. Uh, we have uh, nodes associated with uh, Wigner uh, 4J symbols, and we have holonomy associated with Wigner matrix, um, and also G to lower and upper indices. Um, and we need to construct quantum circuits corresponding to these this tensors. So uh, in the case of uh, holonomy, uh, holonomy in this case uh, is basically a pair of spins, uh, two spins, two qubits, uh, maximally entangled, uh, two qubits. So for example, in the case of trivial hol holonomy one, uh, here we also this tensor G uh, um, uh, put here, so the, uh, but this is just convention. Uh, we need to prepare this state of qubits to encode this holonomy, and we can do it, for example, using some not gate, not gate, Hadamard gate, and control not gate. Uh, the more complicated is the case of uh, interfiner, uh, because we need to um, construct more um, complicated circuit, uh, which uh, corresponds to a uh, Wigner 4J symbol. Yeah, so this, this, this circuit with some X, some uh, square root of swap, and some other gates, this circuit uh, acting on state uh, of this form uh, produce state with coefficient uh, given by uh, Wigner 4J symbol. Um, and now let's see, so, uh, okay, and now uh, first method of simulation. Uh, on the simple example of dipole, we have two nodes connected by four links, and we want to obtain this state on quantum computer. So we first uh, prepare four states of links, so four pairs of qubits, and then we apply uh, this uh, W, uh, this Wigner 4J symbol, and then we make projection on these three qubits. And at the end, on these two qubits, we obtain a state corresponding to a state of these two nodes, this simple spin network. Um, and then we can, for example, perform quantum tomography on these two qubits, but quantum tomography is quite uh, expensive, uh, so there is better uh, possibility. Namely, we can mm, uh, make so-called uh, quantum um, compile, link, uh, so we apply uh, some parameterized ansatz, uh, and we mm, try to tune these parameters uh, such that this uh, ansatz will, would uh, reproduce this state on these two qubits. So we can define some cost function, and when this cost function is zero, then our ansatz reproduces uh, exactly uh, state, and then we can perform some um, variational hybrid classical quantum uh, algorithm where a uh, quantum computer uh, computes cost function and then a classical computer minimizes this cost, cost function. In, and in this way, we can find some parameters for which this ansatz will reproduce, in this case, a dipole. Uh, exactly the same way we can uh, do it for arbitrary spin network, for example, pentagram. Here we need to prepare uh, 10 uh, pairs of spins, then apply five mm, projections, and then also we can transfer this state on some parameterized uh, five qubit ansatz. And this, uh, this method is, um, uh, this method re required a number of qubits, which is four times number of nodes of spin network. And there is a, a small problem because uh, here we have projections on zero states, um, and this projection is implemented by post-selection of results. So we need to reject uh, 
exponentially many results to make this project projection, so it is not very good. Mm, it can be mm, partially mm, improved by partial projection. Uh, so, for example, we can take our pentagram, but we leave this uh, three, uh, this four uh, spins without projection, and then we can uh, glue together two such um, spin networks and obtain a spin network with uh, 10 nodes. And uh, using this partially pro projected spin networks, we can build up uh, higher and higher um, in the number of nodes uh, spin networks uh, with uh, not many uh, measurements. Uh, but there is also another second method which is um, uh, better, uh, which is a method which is tensor inspired network. Um, uh, here we uh, prepare um, quantum circuits corresponding to uh, tensors, uh, to Wigner tensors, uh, different quantum circuits for uh, different uh, position of indices of these uh, Wigner tensors. And we have explicit form of these uh, quantum circuits. Here I just put some blue rectangles, but we have explicit form uh, in terms of gates. Um, and here uh, the holonomy is expressed by single qubit gate, because holonomy is SU2 element, and single qubit gate is also SU2 element, uh, so it is straightforward to just uh, take holonomy and uh, apply corresponding uh, quantum gates on single qubit. So, in general, we take our uh, spin network, then we translate it uh, into mm, a tensor network, and then we can construct a mm, quantum circuit corresponding to this uh, spin network uh, with uh, this quantum circuit corresponding to nodes and uh, this orange one corresponding to uh, holonomies. There is also some projection at the end, but the number of this projection is um, much lower than mm, in previous case. Uh, and also we can uh, uh, prepare open spin networks, uh, but open in the sense that uh, uh, there are some mm, free uh, magnetic numbers uh, at the end, and it is just by, uh, we, c we just need to uh, leave uh, this, this uh, qubit corresponding to these um, magnetic numbers, and, and then we obtain a uh, state. Uh, here we have states of nodes, and here we have states uh, corresponding to this uh, free uh, uh, magnetic numbers. So, for example, uh, uh, one of the mm, possible uh, application of this method is uh, that we can explicitly construct a bulk boundary map as a quantum circuit. Yeah? Uh, so we can take some spin network with a open spin network with some uh, boundary, and we can explicitly construct quantum circuit, uh, which uh, takes as an input uh, states of uh, bulk, and it uh, has an, uh, as an output a uh, state of uh, Bandari. Uh, okay, so to, to sum up, uh, we can construct uh, explicitly quantum circuits for arbitrary for valent uh, spin networks with spins for uh, one half, and it can be used both as a tool for computations that are classically um, hard to do, and also as a quantum information characteristics of quantum gravity states. Because, for example, uh, uh, we can obtain some um, measure of complexity of quantum gravity states by just looking on the number of, of, of gates um, required to uh, obtain this, this, this state. Uh, okay, so thank you for your attention. Okay, uh, we have time for uh, one or two questions. No? <coughs> uh, I would like to know, have you 
actually try to do the computation on a, on a quantum computer? Uh, in very simple cases, yes. And how long did it take? Was it quick? Or compared to uh, like if I do it on a classical computer? Okay, in the case of uh, the small uh, spin networks, classical computer is uh, but, uh, is faster, better. Faster, faster. It, it is uancomparable. Okay, I say. but for big ones, yeah, there should be uh, advantage of to. quantum computer. But uh, we need to have many qubits in quantum computer to, to do it. Ah, so not like you know, IBM has this uh, free quantum computer card. It's online. So, but I don't know what's the number uh, of qubits. Uh, for free, there is seven qubits maximal. Uh, so this is. <laughs> so you have to pay. <laughs> yeah, and for and uh, also in case of paying, uh, there is maximally twenty-seven qubits. Twenty-seven. And, and how much? How many you you need? Uh, for exa for example, for example, here we need uh, twelve, I think, qubits. 12. So it is it is possible. Uh, yeah. But we, we, we need to experiment more with the physics. Okay, uh, we're out of time, so let us thank the speaker again.